Is Google Drive shutting down? Are they getting rid of one of their best services? Are Plex users screwed? Well, they are getting rid of part of Google Drive, but they're actually making it a lot better. And Plex users are actually going to be even better for it, and I'll have a separate video fully detailing that. But let's check out what Google is replacing the Google Drive app with right after this. TunnelBear is the fast and easy VPN service that keeps your data safe and secure behind a bear. Sign up for your 7-day free trial and learn more via the link in the video description. Adam Murray Bills Fox here and I've had quite a few questions about the news that the Google Drive app is shutting down. And what does this mean for current users? What would it mean for Plex users who are using Plex Cloud and so on? The good thing is that the Google Drive service, and I'm just showing you this Verge article on the subject here because it's easier to visualize, the Google Drive service isn't really changing at all. The file syncing desktop app of Google Drive is going away. They are completely shutting it down in March and dropping actual support for it in December. And mine actually converted to the new app today. So what's going on is before Google Drive you had to manually sync basically your entire drive to your computer. It took a long time. It took up a lot of space and it was just generally not super efficient. And so they've con they've combined what they call the file stream capabilities of their enterprise app that they've been working on in beta, the syncing capabilities of Google Photos and the normal Google Drive functionality into a new app called Google Backup and Sync. This replaces your Google Drive app and basically allows you to not have to download every single file. Some files you can just stream straight from the cloud if you have internet access. Here is a breakdown, of course, from The Verge. I mean, I guess they have it from Google's help pages of the difference between the file stream app and the backup and sync app. And mainly it's some enterprise level stuff. Actually, no, sync only individual files. Okay, so in the file stream app, which is only for if you have a Google business account, I believe, yeah, Google enterprise account, um, you get the ability to specify individual files that you can sync. Whereas with backup and sync, you can only specify specific folders. So that is interesting. But backup and sync does let you sync other folders that are not in your drive folder. So that would be pretty cool. And like I said, I just got the notification. I, w I had it all pulled up here. If you want to download backup and sync, you can download it right here. Or if you have a business account, you can download the file stream. It's just google.com slash drive slash download. They've already changed it over. And I was going to do that. Uninstall Google Photos, uninstall Google Drive, and install the new one. But I got a pop-up today showing that my Google Drive has already converted to backup and sync just out of nowhere. So here we get to go ahead and choose the photos or folders from my computer to continuously back up to drive. And those will be the non-Google Drive folders. So let's go ahead and do that. See, you can go ahead and back up your entire desktop, your entire documents folder. I'm probably not going to do that since it's so many gigabytes. I will back up my pictures, though. Uh, I have about a terabyte of space. Yeah, I have 828 gigs of space left on my Google Drive. And I want a manual backup or sync, rather, of my pictures instead of just having Google Photos. And then you see here. Google Photos functionality is also built in. You can automatically have it back up everything to Google Photos. So that is pretty cool. And then you can manually choose specific folders to back up. So I could choose my documents folder, but that would be most of my available storage. And most of the stuff is like game files and things that I don't necessarily need backed up. So I'm going to choose a couple specific folders like my voiceover work that I absolutely want backed up. Although that's still 16 gigabytes, but that's okay. That's way better than 500. And then I can go down here. Is there anything else I want? CD case designs. I don't... Actually, I don't want that backed up. And keep in mind, you do still need to be making regular backups if you want things truly backed up and things like that. But you can choose the folders here from the main installer. You can choose the photo and quality upload size. If you want to just do high quality, it will use Google Photos for that. And you have free unlimited storage with your Google account. But if you want to do an original quality, it counts against your actual Google Drive quota. I pay 10 bucks a month for a terabyte of storage. I have quite a bit left. I'm fine syncing these. Then you have the option to re ask you if you want to 
remove items. So just I'm going to have it set to ask just so things don't automatically get deleted. And then you have the option for backing up USB devices and SD cards. Cool. I'm not going to mess with that right at this moment. Then you can click OK or you could go to Google Drive. By default, it's set to sync everything. But we can change that. And I'm going to do that because I don't need everything synced to my desktop computer. So we're going to go here. We're going to uncheck all. And we are going to work through what should actually be synced to this computer. Ebooks. Yes. My Fiverr work. Yes. Uh, collab docs don't need to be because those are all Google Drive files. Clone Hero. That is a Guitar Hero clone. Yes, please. Color images that I'm using for reference for graphics work. I need those actual files. Yes. I don't need pictures synced given that I'm you know, syncing them already from my documents folder, so there's no reason to sync it twice and take up twice the space. Receipts, I would like a local copy of that just to be safe. School files, I'm no longer in school, so I will just keep those up on the drive. Sheet music, I might reference again soon. And then there's general Vox business, which I can go ahead and sync. So now I'm only syncing, it looks, uh, yeah, about 6.3 gigabytes to my local hard drive instead of the full... 137.6 gigabytes, which is really, really cool. And then lastly, you have a settings menu. You show how much storage you have and available. You can upgrade it. Open backup and sync on system startup. That's what I have for Google Drive. That's fine. File sync status icons, which will show next to individual files, which will be nice. And then a warning if you remove files from a share folder so you don't screw someone over. Clicking OK. Some folders will be removed from this computer. Those are the ones set not to sync in the Google Drive folder. Which for me, under my F drive and Google Drive, I currently have all this stuff synced that I don't need synced. And that is okay. So I'm going to hit continue. And it's going to do its thing in the background. Now, the icon for it is right here. Instead of that Google Drive icon that just went away, you have the backup and sync icon. Hilariously, that is almost the exact same cloud icon as Amazon Drive. So if you still have that app installed, that might get a little confusing. Now, I do still have Google Photos installed here. It is still backing up on its own. 78 files or so, and I don't want to create a conflict or confusion. I want it to finish backing up, and then I will exit and uninstall Google Photos. If we right-click it, we get a preview of what is going on here, what it's doing to process about 6,000 files. You get to open the folder, open the drive on the web, or visit Google Photos on the web. And then you have the usual, those are basically the exact same Google Drive settings here as well. Pretty neat. I gotta say, I am a fan, and I'm glad that it auto-updated. I, I was afraid of screwing something up because Google Drive's original syncing was a little hit or miss. Oh, and now on Google Drive, you have your My Drive, but you also have computers, which will be the synced files here. And so if you set up multiple computers and sync files from those, they all go in the computers section, which is really nice. And then you have a section for Google Photos, of course. And those are mostly just screenshots that I'm syncing that I found that I needed to archive. So, pretty neat. And I'm glad, like I said, that it auto-updated. So, just make sure once it's done syncing that you get rid of Google Photos as well, or you're going to risk syncing photos up twice and things getting confused. And as you can see here, as it's syncing the files, it's been bouncing back and forth between 243 and 10,000 out of 92,000 files. Uh, in the My Computer section... I now have my pictures folder, which has some pictures here, nothing too crazy. It's still doing a lot of the uploading, but it's starting to make the folders and bring in a couple pictures. Uh, this is just like an icon for something. And then it has my voiceover folders, my stream deck layout folder and stuff. Most of the files aren't uploaded yet. I just wanted to show what it would look like as it started actually backing up the folders. So it is pretty neat. And then if I head over to the actual Google Drive folder, which is still registered within the Windows with an icon here. Actually, it never registered as like a dedicated library like Amazon Drive, Dropbox, and OneDrive did for some reason. But if I head over here, it has started to delete a lot of the folders. I had a crap ton of folders in here. It started to delete, to delete those. Since this doesn't let you sync up manu or manually sync up specific files, all the file files in the root folder will always be synced. But since they're mostly Google Drive files, it's not like they take up any space at all so pretty neat so i hope this video was helpful for you if it was smash the like button get subscribed for more awesome tech content and i will see you in the next one
Epos Vox is a Patreon supported production. Our videos would simply not be possible without the support and generosity of our patrons, whom you can see on screen now. If you'd like to join the inner circle and get early access to videos, among other benefits, go to patreon.com slash eposvox to learn more.